Hey guys. So, I wanted to do a video on this rifle here in particular. Uh, this is a rifle build out that I did roughly three to four years ago. I wanted to get into some really long range shooting and this is kind of, but I wanted to do it on a budget, right? And this has allowed me to learn long range shooting uh, to someday save up the money and if, if I continue to pursue it, spend a lot of money maybe on a legit, really, really solid gun or maybe build one. But I wanted to do this video on can you, if you've been looking to get into long range or maybe you've been into a little bit of long range and you want to do it on a budget, how can you do that and based on how I went about doing it? So if you're watching this and you're going to critique and be like, oh, that's a cheap scope or oh, that's a cheap bipod or whatever, you're not looking at what the video is labeled. This is a budget build long range gun. Okay. If you have different options and maybe cheaper options, by all means, drop it in the comments and people can decide on what they want to do. But this gives people the ability, if you want to actually build out maybe a budget gun, this is how I did it. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is I want to go over what this gun is, uh, what's on it, and the prices of it when I did it. This is right as COVID was starting. So the prices for it kind of reflect that. All right. So first thing, action, because that's the main thing. This is a Remington 700 short action. Uh, the gun itself is set up in and chambered in 308, right? The barrel coming off the action is a Brownells M24E stainless steel. Obviously the whole thing has a paint job, so you wouldn't be able to tell that. M24E, uh, so it is a 26 inch, 24, I forget. I think it's a 24 inch barrel. Uh, at the end, you can't see it. There we go, three port uh, brake. This is the Jerry Michalek, if I'm saying that right. Uh, it's for 762 by 51 uh, muzzle brake. So it's got the little nut on the end for once you get it uh, set up right, you, you uh, tighten it backwards and then you're, you're set to go there. Uh, bipod is a Caldwell, nine to 12 inch is the one where you hit the button and the uh, legs shoot out, not the retractable ones. The whole thing sits in a KRG Bravo chassis. I don't remember what I bought the uh, bipod app, but the whole thing sits in a KRG Bravo chassis. And then topped off, we have the Leupold Picatinny, worn uh, 30 millimeter mounts. I believe these are high, high mounts. And then we have a Leupold VX Freedom uh, 4 to 12 with a mill adjustment. It's 1 and 10, 1 tenth mil adjustments with the TMR reticle inside. I got the extended sunshade with the flip covers. This is a, I'm blanking on the name again. Uh, what is this? Weaver. Yeah, this is a Weaver uh, mount, the 30 millimeter mount. So it allows you to attach a red dot or whatever you want to put on top of the scope. And then a Bushnell little red dot. Uh, this is their RDS, maybe, I forget. Um, and that just sits on top. I don't use this as a primary optic for like CQB stuff. This is just allows me to get on target quicker when I'm at full magnification because that field of view really narrows at full magnification. So I can, rather than zoom out, I can just lift my head, check my red dot, put it on where I know the target to be, come back down to the scope and see the target in the field of view and then finish my last bit of adjustment. So. Um, so that's all this guy does up here. It's not, not anything fancy. Um, so, and then, uh, with the KRG Bravo, it takes a CIS 
uh, standard Maypole mags or whatever mag you want to use, but ACIS mags. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the gun at, with, with having gone over the gun, I'm going to go over how I went about doing this on a budget and then how you could do it. If you're wanting to have that experience of actually building out your own gun, uh, and have, you know, kind of how you would an AR where you get that experience of you order all the parts in and then you get to put it together. So really cool, uh, that way, but how I started with the Remington 700, I went, this is back when Walmart still sold the, the gun itself or sold guns in general. I went and they had a Remington 700 chambered in 308 with a sporter barrel. So that's, you know, 24 inch and it gets really narrow at the end. Uh, and came with the Weaver scope. There's that cheap scope on it. Uh, just to kind of get you in the field right away. And I bought that gun for 400 bucks, right? Before tax. Brought it home, shot great. Uh, you know, I was less than one MOA at 100 yards. Uh, the, the, brought the gun home and the first thing I did was get the scope, right? Because uh, I knew that that little uh, Weaver scope wasn't gonna do what I wanted it to. So first thing I did is get the scope. And I think at the time the scope was listed around like 550, but I know, I, th I think I got, got it down to like five on a deal. And threw this guy on, shot great. And I was like, okay, cool, I got, got a scope. Uh, it was still in that crappy synthetic chassis. Uh, so next thing I wanna do is I was like, all right, I'm gonna eliminate that chassis or that stock and put it in in something legit so i did a bunch of looking and this is before mdt had any uh like more budget kind of friendly stuff they all all had their really fancy and krg was the one that i found that had a really great deal for a chassis and so i went and i looked found this one and this chassis i think at the time was listed around 400 dollars so I went and, and got this, put it in there, shot even better. And then I was like, all right, well, what do I want to do next? So the next thing was obviously the barrel. I, I removed the barrel from the, or got, I didn't, uh, with the barrel, I did go and take it to a gunsmith uh, who removed the bar barrel and installed the barrel because there was a small bit of trimming that needed to be done with the Brownells uh, barrel. And I bought this one at the time, I think about the barrel at around maybe $300, right? The same barrel today is gonna run you, uh, let's see, it's made by Saturn and they have them listed at 400, right? So they've gone up, I think like a hundred bucks since I last bought this barrel. I don't know how much the stock has gone up uh, where they're at with that. The scopes, thankfully, have don't seem to have gone up. Uh, now, if I were to have done it, I would have got the Mark III HDs on, on here, and maybe I will swap that out for like the 6 to 18, uh, because this is still kind of more of a budget, uh, budget long range gun. But anyway, so having removed the barrel, the stock, the scope of the old gun, and I ended up eventually removing the trigger, the trick that I did, and this is this is how I helped pay for some of it, or most of it, is I took the stock, the scope, and the barrel, and I listed them on eBay. So the trick is with that, because those don't obviously require any background check, uh, it's just gonna be your action. The, the trick is if you look at doing that, you can currently buy like a Remington 700 ADL, which is what this originated as with the scope for anywhere from 500 to just over 600 on brown L's, right? And you might be able to find them cheaper other places. But the big key to that is one, making sure that your bull head is going to be set up in the like the ammunition you're going to run, whether it's 6.5 and 308, both of those are going to run the same bolt head. But two, 
if you're going to plan to remove the barrel and then sell the barrel, buy it with a barrel that's going to be resellable. Don't buy it. I wouldn't recommend buying it with some weird off caliber that no one's looking for, right? Uh, it's mine started as a 308 and I continued to build as a 308, but 308 and 65 are two incredibly common cartridges. So I would, I would push you in that direction, but here's, here's why doing this can be huge because if you were to go buy just a Remington 700 action and uh, at least on Brownells, it says they're no longer available. So I don't know with the new ownership of Remington, if you can even get it, but they were listed They I had saw them. They used to be at 400. They're now at $676 is what they had them listed on Brownells. But again, they're no longer available. So if you're like, well, I'll just go to the next best budget action, uh, Aero Precision one of, is, would be one of them. They have the new Solus, but they start at $800, right? So you, if you went and bought a Remington 700 short action for that 500 bucks, you're able to sell the barrel for around 150 and then I sold the stock for like 50 bucks. I didn't, I didn't list that real high. And then I think I still have the scope for another 50 bucks. So I made $250 on that. I still have the trader. I just held on to that. But that gave me the ability to put that towards parts of the gun. But now I took a what was a $400 gun and I essentially bought a Remington 700 short action for $150, arguably, and then built it out from there, right? So it gave me an extra $250 to play with to put towards things. Um, and that's really kind of what I'm getting at with this. But you can buy the, inter, what is it, in, international barrels, uh, you may have to go and get the initial barrel removed, but if you get a, an action rod, you can maybe remove it yourself. But they're the set uh, Savage Rem barrels, uh, is kind of the nickname they give them. But those run anywhere from 475 to 585, and those allow you to honestly do a lot of this build at home because they have they thread in and then they have a barrel nut that backs down and locks it in. Uh, you just have to make sure you're getting the right recoil lugs and everything, and that will be talking to some of Brownells or Midway USA or wherever you decide to get your parts and making sure that they're setting you up right. But, um, you know, again, the, the action is a huge part of a build in this, and that was key as to how I did it, where I bought the gun, sold the barrel, stock and the scope that it came with and ended up with an action right a remington 700 action for roughly 150 dollars after i sold everything as compared to going out and buying just an action for 680 bucks right so that's that's how i went about doing this and that i just wanted to share that with you guys that it is possible to start a build at a really great price with with some of the parts where you can buy buy it sell a bunch of it off use that money towards it and then also be like essentially i have an action here for you know next to nothing compared to the full prices that that you would get somewhere else uh i know someone is going to probably have different views opinions that's fine uh if you have other you know options out there that that might be better by all means share it uh the really great thing about that i like with the krg bravo if you're looking at what kind of chassis to do uh with the bravo series you can keep it pretty much naked and just how it is or uh they give you the ability you can add the spigot mount you can add an arca rail on the bottom like i said it already has the ac is uh release down here which you can kind of upgrade from polymer uh releases to metal 
you can remove the back stock and grip. There's just a couple screws you gotta take, pull that off, slap on their either fixed stock or their folding stock for their high-end models. And so essentially you take a really cheap one and turn it into a really expensive one. Uh, they have a whole deal for night vision, clip-on stuff. Uh, it's really awesome. I really like it. But yeah, it, I just wanted to share that information out there with you guys that there's a way to build one of these out on a budget. And if you've never thought about the idea of buying uh, essentially a cheap gun and turning it into a really expensive one, you can do that. Just like we would with an AR where if you buy, you know, buy a palmetto lower and then end up putting like a, at least a ballistic advantage or a Daniel Defense upper on it. And I'm not saying that that's perfect, but uh, you, it, you can upgrade your, your rifle uh, by different ways and through, through different means. But other than that, if you wanted to have that experience of building out your own long range precision bolt gun, this is kind of how I went about doing this to at least get me started learning about long range shooting and, and see if that's something I want to put more money into someday. But thanks for watching. If you guys have questions about the gun or comments, feel free to drop them in the comments and uh, be sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate it. Thanks guys.